Sorry, Dwayne could not be here this morning, but I welcome you. Uh, we're so glad to see each and every one of you. I do not see any visitors except our speaker. So uh, we'll move on. If you're looking at your bulletin, you should have gotten another copy of the Week of Prayer Guide for Lighting Moon and for Foreign Missions. I hope you have been reading these each day and praying for the missionary that is featured. The missionary that's featured today um, are working among uh, unreached people groups and unlike the way we used to do missions years ago, a missionary doesn't go on the field and stay in the same stay in the same place for years and years and years and years. Their job is to preach the gospel, to win some people to Christ, to disciple them. And then those they disciple go out and win others. And they get discipled and they go out and win others. And so the rate of people coming to know Christ grows much faster and with a deeper commitment because they're learning how to fulfill the Great Commission to do what was, they were asked to do, which is to go into all the world and teach and preach the gospel. I, we are collecting the Lottie Moon. The Lottie Moon was a missionary to China who literally gave her life for the Chinese people. By the time her fellow missionaries realized she had dwindled down to nothing but skin and bone, she had starved herself to death. There was a famine, and they had food in the missionary house. And every meal, she gave her portion to Chinese people who lived among them. And she died, they put her on a ship coming back to the United States as soon as they realized what was going on. But she was dead before they reached the first port, long before they came to the United States. Lighting Moon gave everything. She gave her wealth, she gave her health, she gave herself. And we as Christians are asked to do the same thing. The offering for Lighting Moon is not the budget of the Foreign Mission Board or the International Mission Board. What's given to Lottie Moon is all of the extra needs that our missionaries have that they're praying and hoping will be funded through the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. It might be something as simple as being able to print the gospel in the language in the group with whom they're working. It might be a vehicle they need to reach the place where they're going. But your offering goes to bring missionaries in touch with people who need to hear the gospel. So my third test today, I'm pleased to introduce to you our missionary speaker for today. Now, it is, it is not Brother Matthew and Sister Kristen Ward as we had thought. 6.30 Friday night, my phone rings, and it's Matt Ward. He says, I've been in Indonesia, and I just landed in the United States in Minnesota, and I don't know how or when or where I will get back to North Carolina. But I have talked to Michael Butler, and he said he would come and fill in. Now, Michael is from the Blayton Association. He's a deacon in his church. He's very active in the ministry that... Uh, Matt and Christine are doing over in Indonesia. He's made a number of trips there. He is going to share with us uh, about their ministry and the mission that they are doing. And if you enjoy the rest of the service.
We ask your blessings upon Michael as he speaks to us today. And we just lift him up and ask you to just fill him with your Holy Spirit that he will be able to say the things that we need to hear to move us to be more missional in our own lives. Thank you, Lord. Amen. side of the room today. But uh, as we begin our services, we always do. Let's turn to Mark chapter 16 for the reading of God's Word this morning. Mark chapter 16. We are so used to the Great Commission in Matthew that we forget that other gospel writers recorded the events around Jesus' ascension and going back to heaven. And in Mark we get a similar uh, reading, but one that has some things that Matthew doesn't have that are important to us when we consider missionary work. So if you found Mark 16, we'll begin with verse 14. If you would stand in reverence to the reading of God's word this morning. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he reproached them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then, when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by the signs that follow. Heavenly Father, as we read these words and we look at our own lives and desires to be light and salt, sometimes we are hesitant, sometimes we are fearful. Missionaries who leave their homes, their family and friends can face the same thoughts and emotions, Father. But in this passage, we read that you always provide for us, always protect us, always take care of us if we are where you want us to be doing what you want us to do. And Father, what you want us to do is share the gospel with every person we meet. And where you want us to be is where we find ourselves today. So Father, may we today fulfill your calling on our lives. And may you bless those who have gone to foreign places and the calling upon their lives that the gospel might proceed and people might believe and the kingdom of God might be expanded. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Today 
symbol of the manger. This was a lowly place where Jesus was born. It was here that the shepherds found the newborn king. After they had heard the heavenly announcement of great joy for all people, the star symbol reminds us that the guiding light used to direct visitors who in wonder saw the birth of the Christ child. The third candle in Advent is the candle of joy. It reminds us of the joy that Mary felt when the angel Gabriel told her the special child would be born to her, the child who would save and deliver his people. God wants all of us to have joy. The angel who announced to the shepherds that Jesus was had been born told them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, 10 and 11. We light this candle to remember that Jesus brings us the promise of a new life, a life in which the blind receive sight, the lame walk, the prisoners are set free, a life of forgiveness of sin through him, who through faith in him, a life everlasting. We light the candle of joy to remember that Jesus is the one who brings truth and everlasting joy. If you'll take your hymnals and turn to hymn number 103, we'll sing together Away in the Manger. 103. <laughs>
Lord Jesus, we thank you for this Lord's Day that you have given to us to be united together in this special time of service to worship you with our offerings. We pray, Lord, that this money will be used to show your love, grace, and mercy throughout this neighborhood and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother, if you'll come and share with us what God has laid upon your heart, we eagerly look forward to it.
you know, just thank, pray that you would do that in my life. And the next few weeks and few months, things just went, a lot of different things happened in my life. My neighbor across the street, her house caught on fire the, the day after Billy Graham's funeral. And um, it was like four o'clock in the morning. I went over and the daughter and um, her husband was standing outside, they were elderly, a uh, couple. And I said, where is your mom? And they said, she's still in the house. She used to walk her, uh, went around to her bedroom where she was at, couldn't get her uh, attention. And there happened to be a ladder because the windows were kind of high on the uh, house. So I beat in the window and there she was laying on the bed and pulled her out and um, got a heartbeat started, but she didn't survive. And that worked on me for a few days and uh, things like that kept happening. I was on a, uh, had to go to, uh, was on a jury duty and, uh, in Elizabethtown and uh, it was a murder trial. And I just thought, Lord, this is not what I want to do. But as the first recess after they started uh, calling for jurors, I passed this young lady that was on trial and the Holy Spirit just said real clear to me, you're going to be on this jury. Um, and I thought, oh no. So they kept, the next day, went through the jurors, got to number 12, and um, he called number 12. I thought, well, I know I'm going to be on this jury. He said, this is not, I know God, what God said. So they talked to the guy and sent him back to his seat and called the next person. I knew it was me, and they called me up and put me on jury duty. And for that week, you know, there was like one other person that, you know, was on there. And I just knew why I was on there because they wanted to put her on. In, um, there was one other person on there that God just kept speaking to me about this person and you know he wanted to help this person but not um, send her to life to prison for life but give her a chance so uh, as far as I know I don't know where she's in now but she's probably still in prison but she'll probably be there most of her life but she didn't do the murder but she helped plan it she was like 15 years old when it happened but just things like that just kept happening in my life um, during the pandemic God used me sent me to different places all over the United States. Uh, I traveled more during the pandemic than I've ever traveled in my life, just because we got opening doors. And in this past February, it was four years since Billy Graham had died. And on that same day, it was I was headed to church, and uh, back in January, I was praying the first of January, Lord, what are you gonna use me for this year? Because, you know, I wanna do something for you, I just don't know what you're gonna do. Um, February 27th, in four years, and. We had a speaker at our church, and I got church, his name was Matt Ward. Um, he started speaking about going to Indonesia and the work that God was doing among the Muslim people. He was from Tar Heel, and I'd never heard of him before in my life. And he just, uh, I was just so interested in what God was doing with him in, in Indonesia, and we didn't lost people for Christ. And after the service, um, I said, Matt, um, is there anywhere I could go with you on one of these trips to Indonesia? And uh, he said, yeah, I'd love for you to go. Uh, we'll set up a date sometime, uh, talk about it, and, uh, and about you going. Uh, two months later, I was headed with him to Ukraine. Um, and I never dreamed of it back in January 1st that God would use me to get to Ukraine. The war had just started when Matt came to speak at our church. And... Uh, he had said that um, he was going, found out he was going, and I said, you know, when the war started, everybody was like, you know, there's something I want to do, but I, can't, I don't know what to do uh, to help the people in Ukraine. Um, and I called the Baptist North Carolina Missions, and they had a waiting list of 600 people wanting to go to Poland and Ukraine and help out. So I knew that wasn't going to be a, a situation where I probably was not going to get called. Uh, but I found out a few weeks later that Matt was going. Uh, I called him and he said, yeah, uh, he was on going that next week and he said, when I, I'll go and I, when I get things situated because I don't have any contacts, I don't know what I'm going to be doing, uh, when I get there, I'll call you and, and you know, and set up a time and, and you know, try to get you up there. Uh, well, I didn't hear from Matt in a while and so, you know, how Christians are, we get, um, we don't get, we want to push ahead with what God is doing even though, you know, God wants us to wait. So I called the North Carolina Mission again. They said, we have a trip to Moldova. Well, I'd been to Moldova twice, about uh, 10 years before. I uh, said, so yeah, I want to go to Moldova. And, and I almost had my uh, trip, getting ready to buy my tickets. 
and Matt Carlin said, hey, I need you to come to Ukraine. I thought, well, you know, I've already, I want to go to Moldova. It's a safer place to go. There's probably not going to be a lot of bombs about dropping in Moldova. But uh, God said, you know, I, I, you, know you, you want to go to, I need you in uh, Ukraine. Um, so I told Matt, yeah, I'll go. And right after that, I was like, you know, what am I doing? Because everybody told me at work, um, you're crazy for wanting to go to Ukraine. The war, you know, the bombs are dropping, people are being killed everywhere. Uh, so the next few days, it was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I've got to find a way to get out of this. Um, but man said, you know, I thought, well, maybe I'll go to Hungary. I'll make, if I make it as far as Hungary, that's where we'll be staying at before we cross over into Ukraine. Um, if I make it that far, you know, maybe I can find things to do in Ukraine and up Hungary. Um, so I had almost talked myself out of Goa, but uh, once a few days later, God kept dealing with me on uh, going, and I went and got my wheel taken care of and planned my funeral. So, you know, if I got killed while I was in Ukraine, that was okay with me. Um, I was doing this for God. Um, so we got there and um, we made three trips to Ukraine. Um, three different van loads, we carried food and Bible keychains that I'll tell you more about in just a minute. Um, but we stayed with three different, uh, went to three different cities, stayed, went to Lviv. Uh, they had not a lot of uh, bombs dropped there, but uh, they had uh, seen their uh, different things happen in Ukraine and uh, Lviv. Uh, but the western part was not going through a lot of things that the eastern part was going through. So we stayed at uh, a church that housed missionaries, young young group that were training to be missionaries, and they would take them and, and put them in different parts of Ukraine once they graduated. Uh, we carried them food and Bible keychains. They would bag up the food and carry them to uh, places where the war was going on, to soldiers and different people. Um, we were able to go to the train station and pray with some of the refugees as they were coming over. Um, trying to get away from the war and they were going to different places and just some of the stories they would tell us about what was happening to their homes and to their family. They were having to leave some of their family behind because uh, they couldn't get out of Ukraine. They were all elderly and couldn't leave or didn't want to leave. Uh, we went to different places and, and cared food and uh, we went to one church. We were able to worship with them and the, one of the ladies was there, was a refugee, would, would come in and stay there uh, in the school. And her young lady, her young daughter, five years old, had just been killed like two or three days earlier, shot in the head by Russian soldiers. And But she has such a, a love um, for Christ that you could not tell she was being devastated for what was happening. And we just met people like this the whole time. and. Um, we were able to give the Bible keychains to different people. When we got back that Sunday, a week later, Matt called me and said one of the soldiers had called him and they had found one of the Bible keychains in one of the homes. And um, he had a dog. Uh, the dog found the, the keychain. They were trying to find the people that lived there and wanted to know if you could tell who it was. Uh, but we don't have you know, the technology now. We can tell who exactly that, that they, uh, downloaded the phone. But uh, the soldier thanked Matt for what he was doing, but it just showed us that people were using the Bible keychain to uh, share the gospel. Uh, we carried 5,000 keychains over with us when we went. And I wish I had some slides that I could show you, uh, but I didn't have it on DVD. But uh, we carried 5,000 Bible keychains over. Uh, they gave out the Bible keychains to different churches. And uh, by the time we left, there was only 1,700 people had already downloaded the keychain onto their phone. Uh, it went to a lot of the soldiers that were fighting. Uh, we were given to them, so uh, people who were fighting and losing their lives were able to read the Bible and share the gospel with other people. We had a video of one of the soldiers that was on the street sharing the gospel with people. Um, so that was just a great trip. And then I didn't think you know, I'd get on another trip this year. Uh, but Matt Collins said he wanted to go on another trip in November. To, to, to Indonesia. Uh, Matt had lived over there for a few months and uh, with his family and 
He came back uh, with telling me the things that happened to his young son. We were in one of the restaurants for that. Uh, when his son was born, uh, after just a few months old, uh, a group of radicals came in and poured uh, hot water on his son and uh, gave him burn marks and almost killed him a, a couple of times while he was there. Uh, so Indonesia is a, is a dangerous place. Uh, and I knew that when I went, um, but I knew God would protect us and take care of us. Um, there's just so many things to tell you about Indonesia and what God is doing there. Um, it was a 13 hour flight to South Korea um, and then another six hour flight to uh, Singapore. Uh, we took a airplane flight for an hour and then another six hour flight, uh, ferry ride to a, to a remote island. Indonesia is made up of 17,000 different islands, and I know it's hard to conceive of, but when you get there and you see all the different small islands, you can understand why there's so many different islands. Uh, but God is doing so many things in Indonesia, and I never thought I'd make it to a country uh, when God said, when Jesus said, go to, a home, or go to the ends of the earth. Um, Indonesia is one of those places that you will consider to be the ends of the earth. Uh, one of the islands that we went to, uh, we went. We wanted to go through uh, uh, through the jungle, uh, but the road was so muddy that we couldn't get through to it. And in this, in the jungle, there's still a tribe there that lives there that they wear leaves. I mean, they're still live in the jungle. They still uh, can't speak to people uh, in their in other languages because they have their own language. They never met uh, people outside of their their their, their tribe. Uh, these are the type of people that Matt is trying to reach in Indonesia and these different islands. Um, for the first time, I was able to go to an island and preach uh, to a church. Um, and I, I just wish I could tell you about these people that were so loving on us. Uh, after each service, we, when we spoke, uh, everybody wanted to have pictures with us. They never seen a lot of Americans come to their, their village or their church. So we would spend the next 30 minutes after church just taking pictures with everybody. Somebody would take a picture, jump out, somebody would jump in, take another picture. So we'd probably just spend 30 minutes or longer just taking pictures with everybody in that church. Um, and they were just trying to reach out to people in the village. Uh, like I said, Indonesia is very dangerous. It's made up, made up mostly of Muslims. Uh, while we were staying in one place, um, we spent the night in a hotel. We didn't get to do that much. The people there live in very poor conditions. Um, we stayed with a family that didn't have running water. They, their bathroom was, was made up of a squatty potty. You went in, they just had a small, uh, it looked like a little ceramic bowl. And after you, know, you pour the water in, when you take a shower, they had a bucket there with cold water in it. Uh, that's how you took a shower. You took, poured the water, grabbed the bucket, um, and just pour the water in there. But, uh, and that was hard to, to do at first because you know, we used to live in, in America with our hot showers, uh, coming to a comfortable church. So that was, that was hard to get used to, but uh, uh, when you see how people over there live and the things they go through, um, it makes you appreciate what you have here, what we have here in America so much. Uh, but they opened their door to us. Um, I tore my head, my head was so beat up because they're, they're short people and their doors only come up this high. So you always forget to duck when you went up under the doors. So my head was all skin up the first few days. Um, but we got to share in the church services and preach to them. The uh, first service we went to, it was probably 500 people come in. They had children just being sitting all over the front. Um, and we got to share Christ with them. Uh, there were so many people that came forward that night and before we left we gave them Bible keychains. A lot of these had never had a Bible before in their life. Uh, they never had the gospel. There's a lot of things they don't have, but if you go to most of the remote company, countries, they do have a phone. And if you can give the gospel to them in the phone, you may not be able to give them a Bible because the government does not allow the gospel to be shared. It's a lot against the law in a lot of these uh, Islands that if you convert someone to Christ, they could be murdered. Uh, so we had to, you know, a lot of times we give them the Bible keychain and they can get the Bible on there and, 
if the government does, they can always delete the Bible, go back later, and, and download it again. So um, we we're truly trying to get the Bible to every nation around the world, especially to these Muslim nations that need Jesus so much. We're living in dark times. As the Bible first I read to you before, you know we're living in evil times. And then things just get darker and darker and darker every day. But there's one thing that we can do. We can share the gospel. And we don't know when Christ is coming back. We don't know when the world ends. We don't know when our life is going to be over. But God has given us the opportunity to share the gospel. And you may think, well, there's not much I can do. But, you know, I used to think that myself. I used to think there's nothing I can do. Uh, I'll never be a missionary. I never thought I'd be you know, able to go to Ukraine and you know, should share the gospel. But the words and opportunities that God opens for me, He can open for you too. And maybe you can't go to Indonesia, maybe you can't go to Ukraine, but you can help us get these Bible keychains too and get the laws to people in Indonesia and people that need it. We were in a what church? And I'm um, sorry, I get just thinking about it. This gets me emotional about what God is doing in Indonesia and Ukraine. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, he sent another thousand Bibles over to Ukraine. When we got back, uh, the, the same churches we carry Bibles to, they said, um, they kept calling back, we need more Bible keychains, we need more Bible keychains. Uh, he, he had uh, people calling him to get 40,000 more Bible keychains to Ukraine. Uh, but uh, just getting back to Indonesia, uh, we went to one church that we were just going to pray with him. Uh, so we went there in the like, middle of the day to pray with his pastor and um, just to pray over his church and, and the things that it was a small church uh, they were trying to get uh, grow, to grow. Uh, sitting in the, on the back pew was a guy that came in with uh, was going to church. He just started going to church, uh, but he was a Muslim, one of the radical Muslims. Uh, he always came when he was Muslim. Uh, but man spoke to him that day and he said, uh, "Would you like to become a Christian?" And he said, "Yes." Um, so Matt led him that day to the Lord. He said, "Would you like to be baptized?" And the man said, "Yes." So we were staying at a hotel on that particular island. And he said, we'll take you back to the hotel and we'll baptize you today. Uh, so the man said, yes. So we went back to the hotel and talked to the guy that run the hotel because, you know, you don't want to get out there in the middle of a pool and um, in it, get, getting arrested for something that, uh, you know, people are watching you. Uh, but we cleared it with the, people, with the person at the hotel uh, while we were out there, he came and looked, and uh, we thought we would still be getting arrested for doing it. But this man put his life on the line there because uh, it was started being shared on Facebook. And they had friends and family. Uh, he still may be in danger because he, he was willing to share, to give his life, if that was what came to, to, uh, to become a Christian. And that's what Matt is doing right now in, in Indonesia. When I left, the week that I left, he was going to Malaysia, which is right next door to Indonesia. And my, Malaysia is even more radical than, than Indonesia. Um, it's a lot harder even there to get the gospel. But he has a church over there that, that is, uh, I think right now has a thousand people that are, are coming to church in, my, in Malaysia. Uh, in our Lottie Moon, um, video that we watched in our church last week at Tar Hill. It just happened to be a, a, a missionary pastor that was uh, living in Malaysia. And he was telling about the different gods that people worship there and how he had come out of a, a family that was worshiping Buddha. Um, but uh, it's so important for us to get these Bible key changed. Technology has changed in so much, so many ways to get the gospel to the ends of the earth. Um, if, I, if we 
or to give out Bibles in Indonesia. Thank you. It would cost us $12 to give a Bible and to ship Bibles to Indonesia. If we give the Bible keychain that they can download onto their phone, it's $2.50 to get these Bible keychains to different people in the world. And, to, and if you look at young people today, everybody's looking at their phones. Even the, you know, we spend most of our time during the day looking at our phones. So it's not hard for them to, all they have to do is scan the QR code and it just scans it and it downloads the Bible. Uh, Matt is working on getting an app that they can, there's all, I use mine all the time. When I was in Indonesia, uh, the day we left was a, there's a, a Bible verse every day. And every day, uh, when we left, there was a pastor in Indonesia uh, that gave the verse. When we left, there was a pastor in Singapore. And that never happens. It's always a pastor here or somewhere in a church in North America. But if we get these Bible keychains to people in, in other countries and get the gospel, that is my goal. Um, just the last few years, I want to dedicate my life to doing everything I can. Um, we don't know when Christ's return is, but I don't know how many years we have left. But I know I can. I want to give up uh, God to use me. I'm still working a job where I'm a shipping supervisor at a textile plant in Lumberton. Uh, but they allowed me to go on, to use my time to go on mission trips, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, I enjoy being able to volunteer with Matt. Um, if God allows, in the next year, I'll be able to maybe come on full time with him and take teams to different countries to give out that, uh, to give out these Bible keychains uh, and to share the gospel with them. Um, there's so many stories that I could share with you about Indonesia and the people that we were able to uh, share the gospel with. Um, we were at one church one night and I had, I wasn't planning on doing a lot of preaching because I'm not a preacher. And that was one thing I told God. God, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a teacher, there's not a lot of things that I'm not really good at, but if you can just use me in some way, you know, and God has been able to do that. But man, you know, Matt said, you know, I want you to preach one night, so prepare a sermon. Um, so I said, you know, I don't know what God's going to do, so I'll prepare like three sermons. So I did that.